Hello everyone, welcome in this Jira Cloud GitHub integration tutorial with Exalate. My name is Matthew and in this video, I will integrate Jira Cloud with GitHub. So Exalate is built on a decentralized architecture and that comes with a lot of security advantages. So to start the integration process, we need to install it on both sides. And I will share the installation videos in the description below. So as you can see on my screen, I have two instances open. One Jira and one GitHub. And take my word for it, these systems, they are not integrated whatsoever right now. So let's change that with Exalate. As I said, it's decentralized architecture. So after installing it on both sides, for the Jira cloud side, you will find it under apps and then Exalate. So I open it up in a new tab and this is how it looks. For GitHub, you will get a node URL where you can access Exalate as well. And then as you can see here, it's the same user interface as on Jira Cloud. Now, these two nodes, they are fully single tenant. So that means that no information whatsoever is shared with anyone else, any other node. So no processors, no databases, nothing. So they're pu purely unique. So for me, these two nodes, they're purely unique to the instances where I set them up. So to start the integration, only thing we need to do is we need to make a connection between the two nodes. So let's do that. So we go to connections on both sides and you can initiate from either side, that doesn't matter. So let's say we wanna initiate from Jira Cloud, we initiate and we need the destination instance URL. So let's take exactly that. And then we will see there is two options, a basic and a script. A basic is a no-code solution. It's really only to synchronize comments, title, summary, and attachments. And the script one is the full capability of Exalate. So it's Groovy scripting, fully decentralized. The sky is the limit. And that's what I will show in this demonstration. So we click next. Local instance would be Mathieu Leputra demo. Remote instance, Mathieu Leputra Belgium demo video. All right, click next. If something comes from GitHub to Jira Cloud, in which project is Exalate going to populate it? Now we can add some logic to this later. So we initiate it, and then Exalate is going to give us a shared secret. We copy that, we go to the other side, and here we accept it. And then we paste in the key. We click next. We are going to select a repository if something comes over from Jira Cloud to GitHub. So let's do exactly that. And I will select Exalate and confirm it. All right, so let's instantly jump into Configure Sync and I will show you the back end of the, X, of the Exalate connection. And after that, I will show you that the product works and things will go over. But let's first go over that how it is configured. So I will draw on the screen to explain. All right, so we got an outgoing sync from one side that goes to the incoming sync of the other side. So that means that the outgoing sync of one side will take values and we can decide which values here. A copy will be taken from it. And that replica object will go with the tunnel, the connection that we created to the other side. And then here it will be unpacked. So this is the same replica that contains all the values from Jira Cloud. So on the incoming sync of GitHub, first we're deciding the repository. So we can add logic to that with some if statements based on a certain label of Jira Cloud, for example. And then we are taking the summary of the Jira Cloud issue and we're putting it into the summary of GitHub. Vice versa, same thing happens and you can have different mappings. So on the other side, for the process GitHub to Jira Cloud, we are taking all these fields, we're making a copy of it, we're sending or exhalate water we're sending that over the tunnel and then it will be unpacked in here so this happens for every ticket for every synchronization and then you right now it's a fully bi-directional sync but that doesn't necessarily have to be like that if you don't want to send over labels from github to Shiva cloud you can just delete that or the comments you can delete it so you can granularly decide which information will be sent over, which information won't. And you can verify that, which I will cover later. So let's get started. Let's go to triggers 
on the Jira Cloud site because we want to we say okay every ticket that is created in a certain project with a certain label needs to go to GitHub. How do we do that? Create trigger. What do we need? We need a GQL. Luckily, we got Jira Cloud helping us out. We can go to view all issues. And here we can say, for example, project equals maths and labels equals sync. So what we can do is we can copy this, paste it in here and activate it. Let's add it. So what's going to happen now, if I create a new ticket, tickets in Jira Cloud that needs to go to GitHub. More info in the description. Okay. So let's go to the go to the issue. And you also have here Excelate, open Excelate, so you can manually sync it over. So you can see nothing happened yet. But the second I will go here to labels and say sync and I save it is the second that Excelate will pick it up because it's matching the criteria that we provided in the triggers. So you can see here it's in progress right now and it will go over to GitHub. So it's always doing, it's sending the whole ticket to the other side and then it's sending a verification message back like, okay, the data has been set. As you can see here right now, it's synchronized. So that's perfect. Let's go to GitHub and let's refresh. And then here we can see that the ticket is here. So the label as well. So I can say, hello, this is Mathieu and I received it on GitHub. Thanks. All right. Let's change the title as well, GitHub and back to Jira Cloud. And then let's add another label. Let's add that it's a bug. All right, so now all this information will sync back to Jira Cloud. So we don't need to set up a trigger on GitHub for it to sync back. It's only for creating on the other side that you need a trigger. So already we can see the user logged into GitHub is displayed here, the value of the comment. This Excelate user is a proxy user. So this is how Excelate is able to push data on the instance. And then we also have the title that changed and the label that changed. So as you saw, this is, I started from zero and we can see we have a full integration set up. All right. So I said that we could see exactly what the payload is. So if you go back to rules on both sides and you imagine you are the admin of Jira Cloud and you're wondering, okay, for this particular ticket, exactly what am I sending to GitHub? I can go here to entity sync status and then I take the key and the key is MAT 709 search. And here I have two options, local replica, remote replica. The same for GitHub. If I go to GitHub and I go to the repository, okay, and I select the entity URN 117, so the key of the GitHub issue, I have the same. So the local replica means what am I sending to the other side? The remote replica means what is the other side sending us? And you see it's the same here. So the local means, what am I sending there? And then the remote replica means, what is the other side sending us? So with that logic, we can say local, for example, on Jira Cloud and remote on GitHub, and you will see it's exactly the same. So both admins can see what are they sending and what is the other side uh, sending them. So here you can see out of the box, all these fields are added. So summary, key, description, comments, reporter, the labels. So it's all in here and you can all modify the data and do something with it. All right, let's do a use case. Let's say um, the status here, we got the status. We want to do something with it on GitHub. So we can edit the connection. We go to the incoming sync because we are going to change how that the value is getting assigned in GitHub. Let's expand it. 
So we got dummy code here, so I can decomment it out. And then this is based on a mapping of remote status column local status. And then let's say if it's backlog on Jira Cloud, it needs to go to open. But if it is in progress, it needs to go to closed. So that doesn't make sense. But I just want to show you how we can customize everything. Okay, then let's close it and let's publish. So that means that if I go to Jira Cloud and I go change it to in progress, we will see that GitHub will change accordingly. So let's check in refresh. Okay, so we can see it's closed. So now we can do it in reverse as well. For the other side to get up the Jira Cloud, let's do the custom fields. So we got a lot of dummy code. If I expand it, we got user synchronization, comment synchronization, status synchronization. So it's exactly the same. We just reverse the mapping custom fields. So let's decomment this out. And let's say a custom field in Jira Cloud. Let's take, for example, color. So we can copy this. And then here we will paste it. So what are we gonna put in this field? Let's say, for example, the replica.key. Remember, you can find the values with through that entity sync status. And then let's hard code something as well. Okay, perfect. So now I will publish it. And then here I will add a comment and then this will now synchronize back and we will see an update in here. So if I go to Jira Cloud, then here we can already see that it's changed. So here is the value that's filled in. Okay, so one last thing I want to show you is, well, we started in Jira Cloud, but let's start in GitHub now. If you want to synchronize over certain items from GitHub to Jira Cloud, how to do that is you go as well to triggers on GitHub, you say create trigger, and then now you can use the GitHub query language. So what are we going to do is let's say if it's an issue that's open and it's in our repository, it needs to synchronize over. So I'm going to populate it here and we are going to created with this connection. Now, a really nice feature that we implemented, if I make this a bit smaller, is if you go to the three dots bulk exhalate, what exhalate will do is iterate over the whole instance. Now it finds 98 issues that is matching that criteria. So you can synchronize all of them over. And right, because that's not what it does, the trigger out of the box. Out of the box, it will do create an update events from whenever the, tick, the, the trigger was created. So that means if I make a new ticket that's open and is an issue, so tickets in GitHub, then this will synchronize over automatically to GitHub, sorry, to Jira Cloud. But if you want to do a migration, for example, and we want to do the whole backlog of all issues in a certain repository, we can use the bulk Exalate. So if I go back to Jira Cloud, then we will see that the ticket will appear here. So for GitHub, the process is with the trigger that every 20 seconds, Exalate will do a polling method on the instance. And then right now it took about like 10, 20, 10 15 seconds. And we see it here. Hello, this is Jira Cloud. And we will see this go back to GitHub. So you don't need to put anything trigger wise or press any buttons on Jira Cloud. You will do it automatically. All right, so let's refresh our GitHub. And then here we see the value of the comment and then the person who created it. And then the rest, you know how it works with the demo I just gave. So what else is there with Exalate is you got 
general settings where you can change the proxy user that I was talking about. So this is how Exalate pushes data. You got error handling. So if you, for example, misspell the status name, then Exalate will throw an error and tell you exactly where the error is, which line and how to change it. You got a synchronization queue. So if you have, let's say 50,000 tickets in sync, you will see here a dashboard. Okay, where are which tickets? You got bulk connect. So all this time I have been showing Exalate, which is creating on the other side. You can also connect to an existing issue. That would be this. Triggers, I explained that. The entity sync status would be, okay, exactly what is the payload? I showed that. The license details, I'm not going to show. And then cleanup tools is if you want to stop the synchronization between two tickets. All right. Thank you so much for your attention. And if there is any questions or things you would like to see, please put them in the comments and I will get right back to you. I wish you a really great day and bye-bye.